and Dina, aka Princess Nart. <laughs> he was such a wild boy. He was just <laughs> such a spirit, such a strong uh, love for life, zest for life. You could see it in his sparkling blue eyes and that smile, the infectious laugh, famous laugh. Um, cackle, maybe. <laughs> oh, he, from when he was so small, was just gregarious and just wanted to live life to the fullest. And I think that's what he taught us, is that he did live full throttle. He did push the limits. He did have a lot of concussions and a lot of times that scared my mom to death. <laughs> scared me to death, too. But he always came back saying that was the best. <laughs> One story I have to say uh, was during his time at the hotel where he was really on hospice and kind of recovering. He ordered a electric uh, wheelchair. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And so this thing comes and it's huge. And I'm like, uh, Bobby, my husband, can you? Maybe put this thing together. He really wants this. I don't know. I mean, he hasn't had use of his legs. Can we at least let him like cruise around in this thing? And he's like, in the hotel room? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he kind of needs a little speed in his life, and that was always his addiction to adrenaline and like just getting out and feeling the wind in his hair or lack of hair. <laughs> just feeling the wind in his face. Yeah, he was really into that feeling and getting to live life to the fullest, that was part of it. So Bobby did come and build that electric wheelchair. We all looked at it and he's like, is it charged? Is it charged? He's sitting there in the bed. You know, is it charged yet? I, I, I think it's charging. But So we left the hotel room before it had fully charged. But we said, it's probably gonna be an hour or so, it's gonna be fully charged. And I heard that he was ripping all around, hitting the baseboards, and he already dinged it up a little bit in the hotel room. Then we come to the part where we're gonna go back home and he's gonna be in his own home and be there you know, with Zach and really coming back to home was a tough thought process and all because it was just kind of the end of this, um, this journey in the hotel. And so he had that electric yeah. scooterish uh, wheelchair and they were packing and we were for days actually we started ahead of time packing this hotel and getting it back to home and how it was gonna happen and it was a Saturday I had my kids so I wasn't there so I was nervously calling Carol all the time okay so is everything good are you gonna check out by 1130 oh don't think so Dina not 1130 okay how about like two do we need to pay for another day oh you know it's gonna really hard to get out of here he has a lot of stuff and he wanted all this stuff with him and he liked to build things they like to make things so always we had you know things that he was building and constructing and art designing yeah, it was an apartment it was always there yeah, yeah and it all had to travel with him yeah. in fact he was so dead set this day that we were moving that he needed to go to ace hardware so ace hardware within yeah. his mind he was like i, I need things. whatever widget i need this thing i'm going to ace hardware we'll get you there and Terrell was very good at calming him you were amazing um, but we'll get there after we get home but first we need to get home and so they pack the cars. We have three or four cars. Jenny's there, Peyton, everybody helping get this move going. And I'm calling it still five o'clock at night. Have you guys checked out? <laughs> Are you guys out of this hotel yet? I I'm gonna meet you at the home and, and make sure he gets in there. And uh, you know, I have someone that could take the wheelchair in a van. And with my mother-in-law, we use this person all the time. It's really convenient. No, 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 we don't need it. We don't need it. Oh. Anyway, we get it. Um, and I get two hours later a call from Jenny. She's like, We lost him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? She How do you lose him? him? She oh, we lost him. Hotel yeah, security, he took yeah. off in the I said you're kidding. electric. No, he took <laughs> off. So they were packing so the cars and he just took off. So they have hotel security looking, they have the police department looking, and she's like, it's been two hours. Like, we've called hospice, oh, we've no. called all these people, we don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, what are you gonna do when you find them, Jenny? And she's like, oh, I don't know, but I'm driving around. So I call Bobby. I'm like, you're never gonna believe this, but we've lost him. And he was coming back from a golf tournament and it had to be seven o'clock at night. So sun's down, sun's going down. I'm really worried. We just need to find him. He goes, 
You're not going to eat this. I'm driving up PCH and I see that thing I think I put together. Oh, and I see my son. He goes, I'm going to come pick you up. I go, don't come pick me up. Go over there right now and get him. We might lose him again. Go over there. And I'm not sure it's him, but I'm going to go. Turns around. Sure enough, pulls up. He goes, what are you doing? <laughs> Scotty's like, oh. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Get in the truck. So Bobby somehow lifts this 150 pound wheelchair and Scotty into the truck and pulls up out front here. And by that time, I called mom, Daryl, everyone, saying, we found, him. We, found him. we found him. We found him. We pull up, or Bobby pulls up in the truck. He rolls down the window and he goes, Mommy. I got busted. <laughs> busted. Bobby busted, busted me. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm riding in the car, so frustrated with him, but riding in the back seat to go to the house. And he goes, that was the best. That was the best day. And I could see that he didn't have that so wind in his face. Too. He didn't have, it was nine miles. Nine miles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised to think that. And he was miles. coming up Dover is where Bobby actually found him. Yeah. And I miles. just feel like that's feel part of okay. his last like hurrah that he just needed this space, this air, this wind in his face, and to just breathe in that adrenaline and feel that surge of living life. And that's how he lived his life, right? So I I love everything that he gifted all of us in different ways and that he did live life to the fullest. And he did give us this gregarious, bigger than life person that he was. And I want to read um, a letter. Well, it's called A Letter from Heaven. When tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not here to see, if the sun should rise and find your eyes filled with tears for me, I wish you must, so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me, as much as I love you. And each time you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. And when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right there in your heart. I will forever be Princess Nark, and I will be reporting on Zach, and, Tara, and I will be called up to heaven, reporting everything happening. And you best know I will be sharing our family as we go on without Scotty, our precious Scott Wesley. Thank you. Stop it.